Hey guys, welcome back to Podiatry Explained. Dr. Kilfoyle here again with the same patient with the same diabetic wounds, and we're going to show you how they are improving. But quick little thing, this guy, he's got something else going on entirely with his, uh, with his foot. Uh, he's got a new blood blister. He's got a new blister and what looks like it could be osteomyelitis. What osteomyelitis is, osteo meaning bone, myelitis meaning the inflammation of bone marrow. Uh, that is going to be the $5 word. I keep on saying the same exact things. Uh, this is the $5 word for a bone infection. So let's start the video and I'll show you exactly what's going on. Okay, so you can see this black part of his toe that is literally a hemorrhagic blister. It's rather tense, but because the hemorrhagic blister is filled with blood, that is something that the bacteria can eat rather readily. So this hemorrhagic blister, we have to remove because it's literally a buffet for bacteria to have a party, and we're not trying to let that happen. So we're going to remove every bit of this blood we can from this hemorrhagic blister. Here on the fourth toe, you'll be able to see that there is a serous blister, that one that's fluid filled, that's not red. That one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that water out, but we're gonna leave the roof intact. That's gonna kind of act as a natural band-aid. And you'll see here when I uh, when I make the incision or well, on the uh, on the actual part of the toe that has the serous blister, the fourth toe, I make it on the bottom, the plantar aspect of the uh, of the toe, so that gravity will help drain this thing out as we as he walks around and as he does his own li living. So if you ever have a blister and you feel like draining it, which I don't recommend, but you only want to drain it one if it's tense or if it's painful or it's hemorrhagic, meaning blood filled. Now the way the best way to do it is when you do it with gravity, so that the gravity brings the fluid out. Don't pop it from the top or from the outside. Pop it from the bottom and that's how you get it out all right so here we go i'm pushing it out there it is i'm leaving that roof intact that roof being intact is important now here we're on to the third toe now the third toe there's some, uh what looks like necrosis this nail is loose so i'm going to remove any necrotic tissue necrotic tissue is another buffet for bacteria it is not going to be reattached to the body by any means, the, the body is going to reject this thing. It doesn't want this thing in its body. You know, just, just get rid of it. Cut it out for the patient so the potty doesn't have to do it himself. Cut it out, see what's underneath. If it's a big giant abscess, if it's bone staring you in the face, you better know about that. Here we are looking at the bottom of the wound. Measurements are improving. This guy was doing great until something happened. He doesn't even remember what happened. He doesn't remember exactly how these things started. He can't even tell me when it's when it started happening. So he just just shows up to your office for routine debridement on a weekly basis, and then bam, you got three new wounds to worry about. And uh, you know his insurance is paying the same no matter what. So more work. So uh, after doing these debridements, we're going to take an X-ray. We want to make sure that there's no evidence of erosions on these toes. Where you can see the pre, uh, uh, we can see several of these views. We have three different views. This is the DP, this is the dorsal plantar view, the medial oblique, and the lateral view. You can see in his tibia, we have some res residual hardware from when he had that tibia fracture we talked about. He had a non-union of this tibia fracture, leading to a deformity that helped lead to these kind of wounds. Um, but we don't see any erosions in his toe bones, in the phalanges of his lesser toes. We don't see anything, so that's good news. But you can see that he does have evidence of a, a metatarsal resection and a first MTPJ, um, a hallux rigidus procedure. They got a, a Valentin or Valentino. Uh, pretty much, you just want to make sure that the patient's big toe can flex above. And these big giant osteophytes between those bones were getting in the way they were eliminated in a previous procedure. Um, it's, it's a relatively simple and low intensity procedure meant to reduce the pressure in the first toe. Here on the left toe, the left foot, same old thing, just a regular debridement, same old stuff. Going back to that third toe, I'm using my favorite nippers, my Bianco Brothers nippers, the Excelsior. I will recommend those nippers any day of the week. I'm removing any of that necrotic tissue. That necrotic tissue has to go. That includes this nail that's barely attached. That includes any of this black tissue that is just completely devitalized. All of that has to go. There's no point of keeping that on him. It's not doing him any favors. I'm just hoping that when after I remove all this dead tissue that I'm not staring at bone. Because when you're staring at somebody's bone, there's at least a 75% chance, according to the studies, that that bone is osteomyelitic, infected. 
So that's one of the other reasons why I took the x-ray. You see the before and the after or the different views that I have here. This guy had no erosions, luckily for him. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe, comment. It helps us with the algorithm. If that means anything to you, please help us out. We're trying to grow. If you have any recommendations for any videos that you want to see, and it's hard to get more maggot videos, I know you guys like that one, <laughs> just please mention them in the comments. Love you guys, and just remember every day is the best day of your life.